with you. So I am looking forward to coming back and continue this debate. Thank you. Grazie, Commissario. La discussione è chiusa. L'ordine del giorno reca l'interrogazione orale alla Commissione dal titolo Discriminazione nei confronti delle coppie dello stesso senso coniugate o in unione civile. Iniziamo il dibattito dando la parola ad uno degli autori, l'onorevole De Jong, per due minuti. Dank u wel, mevrouw de voorzitter, mevrouw de eurocommissaris. Mijn partner en ik wonen ruim 21 jaar samen. Onlangs hebben we gebruik gemaakt van de in Nederland bestaande mogelijkheid om ons partnerschap officieel te laten registreren. Dat betekent dat we in Nederland precies dezelfde rechten krijgen als getrouwde heteroseksuele stellen. We hadden overigens ook kunnen kiezen voor het huwelijk, want in Nederland is het huwelijk opengesteld voor paren van gelijk geslacht. Laten we nu eens aannemen dat ik besluit om te gaan werken in Polen en dat mijn partner met me meegaat. In dat geval worden we niet langer gezien als stel, want Polen erkent nog geen partnerschappen van gelijk geslacht. Met andere woorden, door gebruik te maken van het EU-recht van vrij verkeer van werknemers, verliezen we een aantal essentiële rechten, bijvoorbeeld op het gebied van sociale zekerheid of pensioenen. Terwijl getrouwde heteroparen hun status gewoon behouden, geldt het dus niet voor paren van gelijk geslacht. Het recht op vrij verkeer wordt hiermee ingeperkt. Als Koe en NGO pleiten we er niet voor dat de Commissie met voorstellen komt voor harmonisatie van het familierecht op dit gebied. Dat blijft een aangelegenheid voor de lidstaten. Maar wel vragen we de Commissie met voorstellen te komen die ervoor zorgen dat de rechten die werknemers in het kader van het vrij verkeer genieten, of zelfstandigen, dezelfde zijn voor iedereen. De Commissie lijkt op dit ogenblik op zijn zachtst gezegd te aarzelen met het ontwikkelen van voorstellen in deze richting. Daarom heb ik samen met andere collega's om het debat van vanavond gevraagd. En ik hoop van harte dat de commissaris kan toezeggen dat hier snel werk van wordt gemaakt en dat bijvoorbeeld op het gebied van sociale zekerheid en pensioenen de rechten voor paren die zich in een andere lidstaat vestigen, dezelfde zullen zijn, ongeacht de vraag of het gaat om paren van gelijk geslacht of heteroseksuele paren. Dank u wel. Grazie. La parola all'onorevole Cornelissen per due minuti. Voorzitter, vrij verkeer van Europese burgers is een basiswaarde in de Europese Unie. Het is onacceptabel dat een grote groep mensen van deze basiswaarde is uitgesloten. Mensen met een huwelijk of een partnerschap met iemand van hetzelfde geslacht, wiens relatie niet wordt erkend in een aantal EU-landen. Dit is geen technisch probleempje. Het raakt aan de meest belangrijke dingen in een mensenleven. Kan ik mijn lief meenemen als ik in een ander land ga werken en mijn kindjes? Krijg mijn lief een pensioen of een uitkering als ik ineens het loodje leg? En het gaat nog dieper dan dat. Mevrouw Redding, stelt u zich voor dat u al jaren heel gelukkig getrouwd bent met een vrouw. Jullie gaan samen naar Italië of naar Griekenland omdat u daar de baan van uw leven hebt gevonden. En een paar jaar gaat alles heel goed, maar dan slaat het noodlot toe. Uw geliefde partner krijgt een auto-ongeluk en belandt op de intensive care. Dan kan het maar zo zijn dat u geen besluiten mag nemen over uw levenspartner. Dat u niet eens bij haar mag zijn om haar hand vast te houden. Want voor Italië bent u niets. Heeft u niets met haar te maken. Voorzitter, ik ben ontzettend blij dat steeds meer landen het huwelijk of partnerschap openstellen voor paren van gelijk geslacht. En tienduizenden mensen hebben daar al gebruik van gemaakt. Hun aantal wordt steeds groter. Een aantal lidstaten blijft helaas achter. Dat vind ik jammer, maar we kunnen dat niet afdwingen vanuit hier. Wat we wel kunnen vragen is erkenning. 
zodat het vrij verkeer van EU-burgers echt voor iedereen in de EU uh, binnen bereik ligt. En graag hoor ik van mevrouw Redding hoe zij dat samen met ons voor elkaar wil gaan krijgen. Dank u wel. Grazie. La parola all'onorevole Cashman per due minuti. Thank you, Madam President. Commissioner Redding, your record on non-discrimination is exemplary. Uh, the testaments, the two testaments you've heard tonight, uh, are intensely interesting. Like Mr. De Jong, uh, I too am a gay man in a civil partnership, uh, in a relationship of 27 years, but has only been recognized by the state for five years. As was said earlier, if I were to have an accident whilst on holiday in Italy, my partner would not even be given the basic right of deciding whether, in such a case, I should be on a life support machine or not. It is these basic elements which are so private and personal that are deprived on the sole basis of prejudice. There are those who say that this will interfere mutual recognition and the respect for civil laws which are acquired and civil rights acquired in another country, recognized and enforced in another member state, would undermine a member state's competence on marriage. That is absolute nonsense, and I'm afraid it is an argument proposed by those who wish to have any excuse but to achieve equality. There are five member states that recognize same-sex marriage. There are 12 that recognize civil partnerships. Ten of the 27 remain outside that brilliant ring of tolerance, equality and understanding. And Commissioner, it is your role, and I know it is a role that you will take up, to push them into that ring of tolerance and understanding, when we really will have an area of freedom, security and justice, not just for some, but for all, regardless of your sexual orientation, your gender or your gender identity. In politics, it's so easy to follow public opinion. The hardest and most difficult thing to do is to lead it, to face down prejudice, but if this House does the right thing and you, Commissioner, do the right thing, we really can change the Union and change people's lives for the better, not only for ourselves, but for generations to come. Your record at your hearing is unequivocal. You believe that the rights inherited in one country should re be respected in another. I have the quote here, but I know I do not need to remind you, because you are a woman of principle who will stand up against persecution and discrimination. Thank you. Grazie. La parola all'onorevole Intveld per due minuti e trenta. Thank you, Chair. Um, Commissioner, colleagues, just a couple of days ago I was watching uh, a documentary on BBC World about uh, some countries uh, in the Caucasus where it is customary that men ride out and steal a bride. When they, their eye catches a nice girl, they abduct her, take her home, rape her, and then she's his wife. Um, of course, the families of the girls uh, vigorously protest against this because they feel it's not up to the man to decide to take the girl, it's up to her father to decide to give her away. Of course, it was, it was a, a heartbreaking documentary. It was shocking. And why? Because we feel that the choice of a partner, a choice of a husband or a wife, is the most personal, the most intimate choice you can make in life. It is not for the man, not for your father, not for your brother, and certainly not for the state to determine who will be or not be your partner. We have seen in history, and we still see today, countries where the state will ban marriage between black and white people. In my country, not, not very long ago, this was something my grandparents were confronted with, Catholics were not allowed to marry Protestants, even if they loved each other. There are still conservative Muslims who feel their daughters should not marry non-Muslims. Um, there are many examples like that, and we feel that's very shocking. Well, but we still have countries in the European Union that ban marriage between consenting adults of the same sex. Now, I know that for some people it is very shocking that people of the same sex can love each other, but that's not really relevant. What is relevant here is that every single EU citizen should have the same right. 
it is not for the european union or for the member state governments to judge a personal relationship. now the european union has no competence in family law but as michael cashman has just pointed out there are five countries already which have opened their marriage laws for same sex couples and there are a number of other countries which have some form of recognised partnership. the very least we should be doing in the european union is apply the principle of mutual recognition. we do it for jam and wine and beer why do we not do it for marriage and for relationships? i would like to ask the commission to take the initiative for mutual recognition between those member states who already have marriage or some form of registered membership and give us a road map on how we will get to a situation where those relationships will be recognised everywhere. thank you. Grazie. La parola alla commissaria Reding. Prego. Madam President, um, it is clear that the right to free movement and residence of the union citizens and their family members is one of the cornerstones of the EU. It is not only a fundamental right, it is also a personal right. And uh, Article 21 of the treaty is very clear and it gives effect to this right. And the ban on discrimination, including discrimination on the level of sexual orientation, is also a cornerstone of the EU and it is also recognised in Article 21, but this time of the Charter of Fundamental Rights. Now, the directive has brought a very significant improvement for same-sex couples and I would like to thank the Parliament because it was the Parliament who has uh, really pushed uh, this one uh, through. And the EU law provided for the first time for rights of both same-sex and different sex couples to move and reside freely within the European Union. Now, having said that, for me it is implicit that if you are allowed to move freely and to reside freely, you must also have the rights which are coming from your first residence to your second uh, residence. Uh, of course, it is for the member states, as has been said, to decide whether or not they provide uh, for registered partnerships or for a legal order. But what we see in the evolution is that more and more member states go to the direction or of recognising or of allowing uh, marriages of uh, same sex. And the directive is very modern in that respect because the directive does not distinguish between same-sex couples and couples of the opposite sex. The directive actually is neutral on this. It allows all the situation to happen, to express themselves and to have their right. And in this sense, it is not necessary to amend, to amend the directive. Now, it is another thing how this directive is implemented in practical terms. So, it, the directive in itself is not the problem, but the interpretation of the directive. Uh, and for the Commission, it's very clear that the directive must be applied in full respect of the principle of prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation. Now, having said that, the Commission has to ensure the correct application of EU law. That means the Commission has to monitor whether, in applying the directive, Member States respect the fundamental rights, including also the prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation, the famous Article 21 of the Charter. 